Hey, I know summertime is ending, but things are just heating up in the crypto sphere. First off, thanks for joining Cardano Love License channel, where we spread the love. Do subscribe down below if you want more videos like this. Now, what are we talking about? Here are two heavyweight titans going at it, Cardano versus Ethereum. Ethereum came out wanting to pick on Cardano. And as a response, Cardano came out swinging haymakers. It was truly beautiful to see Cardano's rebuttal. Once Charles caught wind of Vitalik trying to badmouth Ouroboros. Why? Maybe because he feels a little bit threatened by Cardano's potential and his fast progress. Charles was like, I'm not even going to be childish and discuss this on a Reddit page. I'm going to come at you professionally and try to murder your project. We know Charles only rolls with the best and brightest in his circle. Let's hear what IOHK's Kayas had to say. Well, let's jump right into it. How does Casper compare to Ouroboros? In response to recent discussions in social media, we gave a brief comparison of the Ouroboros and Casper proof of stake protocols. Ouroboros is a formally specified and analyzed protocol with mathematically proven security guarantees based on clearly specified assumptions. The protocol description, models, and proofs are all public. Ouroboros offers stake-based finality with the strongest possible guarantees in terms of the amount of stake backing up on its operation. Regarding Casper, we are not aware of any currently published source that sufficiently describes the protocol's mode of operation, nor any provable guarantees about it. Still, from what has been presented about Casper until now, as compared to Ouroboros, we can safely conclude that Casper provides much weaker guarantees in terms of how much stake the adversary needs to control in order to disrupt the protocol. Below, we compare the two protocols along several dimensions. For lack of proper documentation, many properties of Casper have to be assumed to the best of our knowledge. All right, moving right along. Execution model and possibility of claims. The Ouroboros protocol is analyzed in a model that is fully described. It unambiguously defines all the participants' programs, their execution and interactions, their communication, including network properties, and the potential corruption by an adversarial entity of any set of parties controlling, controlling a minority of the stake. In particular, the formal modeling of Ouroboros permits precise quantitative statements about stake bonds and settlement times. See below. This makes all the claims we make about Ouroboros entirely concrete. There is nothing left up to interpretation or reader perspective. Without such a model, notably missing in the Casper FFG white paper or in any other available sources related to Casper, it is possible or sorry, impossible to improve the correctness of any claims about the protocol. Good design and uh, intuition and best effort are just not sufficient when a ledger consensus protocol is supposed to carry assets worth billions. And I do agree. Stake assumptions. Ouroboros is proven to achieve persistence and liveliness under the assumption of honest majority of all stake in the system, even in the case that some significant portions of stakeholders are not participating in the protocol. In contrast, Casper requires a two-third fraction of deposited stake to be controlled by honest parties. Naturally, larger amounts of stake are more difficult to control so that basing security on the total stake in the system, as in Ouroboros, is a more prudent choice. As a concrete example, in the current sharded version of Ethereum, a minimum of 32 Ether per validator is required with 100 to 128 validators per shard depending on the reference without any other restriction. It follows that, <clears throat> sorry, <clears throat> it follows that if the total deposited stake among all prospective validators turns out to be minimum and is not otherwise restricted, then just a few thousand ether would be enough to register a set of civil validators 
that could disrupt the ledger consensus security pro properties. That is big and you do not want that, uh, that type of security to be guarding your assets. Put simply, Ouroboros provides stake-based finality and it does so with the strongest possible guarantees in terms of stake against a malicious coalition controlling any amount of the total stake existing in the system as long as it is bounded below 50%. In the Casper FFG white paper, where Casper operates over the Ethereum blockchain, stake-based finality is provided every 100 blocks under the assumption that two-thirds of the deposited stake is honest. As a concrete example, in the same time, uh, in the same window of time, which is a little over half an hour in our current deployment, we can derive from our formal analysis that Ouroboros will offer finality against, say, a 10% adversary with probability of error less than 2 over the square root of negative 44. This is less than 1 over 10 trillion. To appreciate such small numbers, Consider that it is expected to have one large asteroid hit the Earth once every one million years. Thus, it is 10,000 times more likely that a big asteroid will hit the Earth next month than that Ouroboros will reorganize its chain to drop a particular transaction after it has been included in the ledger for about half an hour. Wow. That's amazing. Incentives and Dynamic Availability Casper FFG cannot handle uncertainty in terms of the number of participating entities once the set of validators becomes fixed. This means that the protocol cannot operate in the sleepy setting and dynamic availability setting where a significant number of parties that are supposed to act in the protocol are unavailable due to network conditions, hardware failure, or simply lack of interest. The Casper FFG white paper acknowledges this as the catastrophic crash scenario and observes that in the case no future checkpoints can be finalized. The authors propose a mitigation in the form of the so-called inactivity leak. The inactivity leak introduces the possibility of two conflicting checkpoints being finalized without any validator getting slashed. All right, now that might be an issue in the future for Ethereum. All right, moving on. Lastly, sharding. This property refers to the ability of a database or ledger consensus protocol to scale its processing power as more nodes or processing capacity enter the system, ideally with a linear speed up in the number of nodes added. Ouroboros Hydra, the scalable version of Ouroboros, is in development and will be released in due time following our usual mode of discourse. What is that? Let's read on. The, uh, I.e., the release of a full containing uh, complete mathematical formulations of the problem that we solved, a full description of our protocol solution, as well as concrete statements about the protocol's properties that are accompanied by all necessary proofs. At present, the version of Casper that enables sharding is incomplete, even in terms of protocol description, and as such, it cannot allow any proof of security. There you have it. And Kai has dropped the mic on a tactful ending. I mean, wow, this rebuttal was very entertaining to read, better than pay-per-view. In conclusion, Cardano does not play. <laughs> they spent over two years researching projects and knows any cryptocurrency worth knowing pros and cons. Don't step to Cardano unless you come correct. And well, I think Ethereum might have made a bad mistake on this one. I'm excited because this might actually only be the start of this crypto vocal brawl between the two titans. All in all, I think Cardano provided a beautifully written comeback in short notice after Ethereum tried to blindside Cardano. Well, what do you think? Did Vitalik commit crypto suicide for coming after Cardano? Did Cardano TKO Ethereum? Or will 
Ethereum comeback after this. Well, I think there's exciting times uh, in the future. Like always, thanks for watching. Do subscribe and please like below. Till next time, do enjoy.